We're present here today with the director, cinematographer and editor of the film The Sound of Old Rooms, Mr. Sandeep Ray. Welcome, sir. Welcome. So you filmed this movie over a period of 20 years. Correct, 20 years. To document a film for a period of 20 years takes a lot of patience and a lot of creative thought. Can you tell us a little more about that? How did you have the patience to go through the whole process of filming it? More patience than creative thought, frankly. Um, but I should clarify and be honest that it wasn't consistently filmed over 20 years. You know, it was episodic. It's, not, it's impossible to do something consistently for that long. It was episodic as events happened, as I had access, as I was near the subject. Um, and yeah, that's, that's sort of how... And this story is obviously uh, someone you know from your personal life. Is, does it arise from a personal experience? Yes, this is someone I know very well, which was an advantage. I mean, I decided that I'd like to make the film about the most interesting person that I have the best access to. And you put these two criteria together and I, you know, it was this poet who I knew well, I knew his family intimately. And so we, we didn't have those issues of the subject feeling awkward or not, you know, not entirely participating in the film. It was very transparent, very open. It's very important to feel comfortable with the kind of actor and character that you're working with. And you've done films in the past as well. How has this experience been different from the films that you have shot in the past? Well, on an emotional level, this was a labor of love. I mean, this this is my film. I have, you know, if you Google me, you'll find other things, but th this is my film. And I don't think I've, I've, you know, felt more emotionally involved in anything than this particular one. Of course, it, this wasn't about money, obviously not. It's a documentary film. But if you think of uh, the amount of time it took to make it, it wasn't even a very practical project. But I thought it was important and uh, it, was, it was something that kept me going artistically, you know. Right, true. And your film talks about uh, an ordinary family entering the new millennium. What kind of problems do you think an ordinary family today in India faces? Yes. Well, uh, I'll, I'll give you an exact phrase. I think while you're watching the film, you get a feeling of what I call nostalgia for the present. In other words, you know, Calcutta and of course all of India since 1990 to 2010, which is roughly the period the film is being made, has changed. Even if you don't see it in the film, you sense the exterior world and how it is perceptibly changed, right? And then you have people who hold on to their same personal emotional lives, which is their ambitions, their their love their relationships with their family with their wife this need to be a professional to have a child this you know goes on regardless of you know sort of the exterior world changing but you get a sense that these old houses that exist in in some parts of india and in this case in calcutta this life of a joint family uh, it is, it, you know, the, the multi-storying of India is, is kind of hanging over the film, even though it's not implicit in it. Yes. Do, do you think it is important to um, sort of reinstate these traditional values? Because in the modern life, in the hustle bustle of modern life, we've kind of become so disconnected and we've become so busy that nowadays we have very less time to spend with our families, with our close people and... You know, uh, we have so much work and there's always things on our mind. Do you think it is important to reinstate these values? Um, the world changes. The world is what it is. And when it changes, it changes. And, and um, it's... Uh, you, you can't make a statement against the world by making a little film about a... F you know, but you can, you can look at the change and maybe it helps us reflect on the change. Uh, maybe it reminds us all of us a little bit of our lives and how it's changed but you know every generation every era will talk about uh, massive changes right but in this case we have a wreck in my film one attempt uh, of it would be in, in I attempt to create a record of this change and you actually see what college life in 1990 was like what you know what things look like in 2011 and actually Calcutta doesn't look very different 
you know it, it actually doesn't look compared to a lot of other parts of India Calcutta does not look very different so the film you know externally doesn't actually perceptibly look that different you know? yeah. and what kind of expectations do you have from the audience how do you think they're going to respond to your film most importantly I hope they find it funny you know I it is a you know story about a poet but it's not a heavy film you know it's not about the debate of literature in society I mean that's present in the film that's you know the the sort of something that holds it together but you know I, I I've tried to pick up humor in everyday life the way your mother yells at you in the morning the way your wife yells at you or you yell back in at your wife the way your son misbehaves the way your friends talk to you uh, th these are universal things they're not even Indian they're they're everywhere and and I I just I I want to listen to people laugh when the film is is happening. It's not a comedy, but it's the everyday humor, you know. Yeah. Um, what upcoming projects? Upcoming projects. Well, basically, I'm I'm very interested in the singular individual journey through time, through life, right? But I don't have the time to do another 20-year film. This is a one-in-a-lifetime film. I happened to be a young man when I'm, well, I'm not that old, but I'm approaching middle age, but when I started this and I carried it through a certain amount of time, I don't want to release my next film when I'm 60. So I, if, if I keep to the ideal of following a personal journey, this time I'd like to fictionalize it. And I guess that's as much as I can say about that right now. All right. Thank you so much for talking to us. Sir. It was really nice meeting you. All the best for your future endeavors. Mr. Sion Day, the music composer of the movie The Sound of Old Rooms, is present here with us. Welcome, sir. Welcome. How does it feel to be here at Dimmer? It's very nice. It's very, very, it's very lavish. It's very, yeah, it's very nice to be here. Yeah. Uh, your uh, film is going to be shown very soon. How do you feel about that? Yeah, I'm very excited and, um, yeah, it's real. Do you, do you think people are going to like the music? I think that people are going to like the film more, I hope, than, than the music. Um, you know, I tried to kind of make the music as, as integral to, to the film as possible. Yeah, it's a poetic uh, film, so you had to, I'm sure you had to put in a lot of thought into composing the music, is it? Uh, yeah, we, well we did, but we also wanted to choose, uh, you know, an, an instrument or a, or a particular feel for the score, which wasn't going to be too obtrusive or, you know, and take away from, from, from the picture. So I ended up uh, recording this, this Swiss um, drum which is, which is called hang and they're, they're quite hard to get a hold of you know and so we we selected this because it was a very unusual uh, piece of um, you know a, a, a very unusual instrument and it created a, an effect which kind of didn't have any any boundaries or anything you know it, was, it wasn't uh, necessarily Western or, 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 or Asian or Indian it was just a very unique thing you know so um, I think that worked very well with the so you think everyone's going to like this? It's not culture specific. No, definitely not. And that that, that you know, for me as a musician, I think uh, you know, for this film anyway, um, I think you needed to have something that wasn't culturally specific. How has this been different from the music that you composed for other films? Uh, this is pretty very was a very hard task, you know, uh, especially because of the long um, period of time over which the, the the film is shot. So you've got many different kind of uh, formats. Uh, so in terms of the the production effect, the production that the music has to go through, it had to match the different formats and and then you know compromise between them. So you know you couldn't like have a very hyper well produced you know, section and then you know a, a not so well produced one. So it, it was a very hard film to, to kind of judge and and and, and compose for. But I, I had, a, had a great time doing it. You had a great time doing it. Are you uh, looking forward to more projects with uh, yes, Mr. I am. Yeah, yes, I definitely am. Uh, hopefully the next one should, uh, yeah, shouldn't take as long. <laughs> and uh, yeah, very much so.